So let's start with a summary of what we'll be covering in this project today. Uh, we'll start with a brief introduction to the inverse design method. Then we'll be looking at the mainline design of an axial compressor stage. Uh, then we'll see how different components like the rotor and the stator can be designed using the inverse design approach. And then we'll also see how the performance of this baseline stage can be enhanced through the use of automatic optimization with inverse design. And finally, we'll wrap up with some concluding remarks. So let's start with an idea behind the uh, inverse design approach which we use throughout this project. And uh, as you can see in this workflow, um, these are the inputs that are used by the inverse design method to give us the final blade design. So apart from the basic parameters, these blade loading inputs are really flow related. And so once you have a good understanding of your specific flow issue, whether it's profile loss, tip leakage loss, flow separation, or uh, shocks that you're dealing with, it's possible to come up with guidelines on the optimum blade loading to tackle each of these issues. And actually this know-how has generality, which makes it suitable for all your compressor applications. And so what's interesting then is that you only need to rely on your knowledge of flow physics and uh, then this method will work for you regardless of your compressor size or uh, which specific speed regime it falls under. So this makes the entire process very intuitive and uh, removes any empiricism that is commonly seen in conventional design methods. So now let's look at the design of compressors in a bit more detail. And so across the specific speed range, compressors are subject to various uh, flow phenomena and loss mechanisms which are dominant in that particular range. For example, as you can see in this specific speed chart, the tip leakage and secondary flow effects are more dominant in the lower ranges and uh, whereas shocks and profile losses take priority in the higher side. So the question then is whether it's possible to come up with an optimal set of design guidelines based on these fluid dynamic considerations of uh, reducing the dominant flow losses of your uh, compressor. And uh, this is actually what we aim to explore through this project. 